be in chapter 7, and this is all about animal nutrition. So think back to what we did for plant nutrition. Some things are going to be the same, yet a lot of things are going to be different, because now we're talking specifically about animals. So just as a review, um, we wanted to make sure that all organisms need to take in many different substances into their bodies. And this is made uh, required to make new parts, repair old parts, and used to release energy. So remember, all organisms do this. Metabolism are the chemical reactions that take place in your body. And this involves using energy to build molecules or even to break down molecules in which energy is stored. And all of this relates back to nutrition, which involves the taking in of nutrients, typically, which are organic substances. They contain raw materials, they might have mineral ions, and all of this is used for growth and tissue repair. So proper nutrition helps metabolism. So please know that these are definitely related. Now remember when we talked about plant nutrition, I mentioned the only two kingdoms that, that don't make their own food are animals and the fungi kingdom. So the animalia and fungi kingdom do not make their own food. So they are heterotrophs. So they get their energy from food instead of directly from the sunlight. So basically other organisms. And the chemical energy in the organic compounds from these animals or organisms are transferred to themselves to make organic compounds. So it's make sure that you understand that the heterotrophs can't make their own food. They have to get their food from someplace else. Now this all relates back to diet. It's important for animals especially, and this is really where humans come in here, that our diet is nice and balanced. Now the diet does not mean what you think about it or you hear these diet fads. The diet is the food an animal eats every day. So your diet consists of anything that you eat. It's very important to have a balanced diet which contains the seven types of nutrients in correct amounts and in the correct proportions. A lot of times we follow the, the guidelines that are given um, by the United States. Sometimes, however, research suggests that those proportions are not always correct. So there's carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, water, and fiber. This constitutes a balanced diet, having all seven of these in your system. Now if you don't put in, let's say, carbohydrates, you might be doing some ill for yourself. Now low carbohydrates or low fat or low proteins, these are all typical fads that we see or diets that we see out there, but it's very important that your body receives just enough in order to continue going. Now the amount of energy you use depends upon your age, your sex, and your activity level. If you are very active, you probably will need some more proteins and possibly fats, and maybe even carbohydrates. If you are not a very active person, then your diet should reflect that. And your diet should contain variety. So you shouldn't always be eating chicken, or you shouldn't always be eating beans. Make sure that it is a variety that you are adding in, because a lot of foods have different substances that your body needs, a lot of minerals and vitamins. Which leads me to vitamins and minerals. So the vitamins are very important for an organism, especially the human body, because these are organ organic substances which are only needed in tiny amounts. If you have too much or even too little, you can create a vitamin deficiency or you can actually overdose on vitamins. Um, it doesn't happen very often, but you could. You can actually um, be very sick from a vitamin C overdose, let's say. But let's talk about deficiencies. Now deficiencies are when you do not have enough of a vitamin or perhaps you don't have enough of a mineral. Scurvy is an example of a vitamin C deficiency and you can see on your screen two pictures of what scurvy kind of looks like. Scurvy was a large, large deficiency that we saw on, um, on mariners, on boats, because they didn't often have access to fresh fruits that had, or, and vegetables that had vitamin C. So you saw this a lot with mariners. Minerals are or inorganic substances, again, which are only needed in small, tiny amounts. Now notice the difference between vitamins and minerals. Vitamins are organic, 
minerals are inorganic, so keep that in mind. Now remember, too little of a mineral is also cause for a deficiency. So for example, if you have calcium deficiencies, you might experience bone loss. And you might see something like you have in this picture here. How if you've noticed people in their older ages, they tend to shrink. Well, they're not actually shrinking. What's happening is that they have a calcium deficiency and their spine is becoming more of, it's basically becoming more compact. So instead of being nice and spread out, nice and tall, it's almost like they're hunching down. So while, yes, it looks like they're getting sh shorter, they actually have a calcium deficiency because of bone loss. This is also osteoporosis. You could also have an iron deficiency. An iron deficiency is called anemia, and this, is, uh, this involves your blood. So there's a little picture here showing some of, the, um, some of the symptoms that you can get in severe anemia cases. So you might see yellowing eyes, you might see a paleness of the skin or a coldness, um, you might become short of breath, your, might become, uh, your muscles might become weak, you might have a change in stool color. These are all things that are extremely important to keep up, especially when involving your heart, your spleen, your blood vessels. So these are all things that um, anemia could cause. So if you have cause for an iron deficiency or you think you might have one, you might want to go check with a doctor to see if you need some extra iron. Very important in your diet. Fiber is also something that's extremely important in your diet. Now fiber keeps the alimentary canal working properly. The alimentary canal is everything, it's basically the long tube that runs from your mouth to your anus. This is your digestive system. So your alimentary canal is everything from your mouth to your anus. It's that long tube and it really is a continuous tube that runs throughout your body. Now Peristalsis. This is the contraction and relaxation of muscles along the alimentary canal that allows food to move from one end to the other. So your body does something um, involuntarily, meaning that it just does it. You don't actually have to wish it to happen or make it happen. So starting in your esophagus and all the way down into your stomach, into your intestines, these are the series of contractions and relaxations that your muscles go through. Have you ever had cramps after you eat and you try to do some sort of activity? Well, your body is focusing all of its blood and all of its energy into the digestive system. So cramps might happen in these cases because it's not getting enough blood. Fiber is typically a less digestible food and it's important because it stimulates the alimentary canal and it makes it work harder and this prevents constipation. So while you might not think fiber is a, you know, a thing that you have to have, it actually helps you move, work harder. So your body has to churn and do a lot more of its digestion in order to try to digest this fiber, which is not really digestible. So humans cannot digest cellulose, which is the material that makes up plant cells. So this means that bran or brown rice or other types of materials that have cellulose, like um, certain kinds of plants, let's say celery, they are good sources of fiber. So you might want to include some of that in your diet. Saturated fat has gotten a bad rap in today's society. Now saturated fat is the kind of fat that's found in animal products. So if you are eating um, some type of meat product or anything that comes from an animal, um, meats, or I'm sorry, meats and dairy products, this is where saturated fat comes from. Now some research su suggests that too much saturated fat in your diet leads to coronary heart disease and heart attacks. Recently there has been a host of other types of research that actually says that this is not the case. So um, take a look at some of the other research out there. Don't always go for that first research that you see Research and see which type of foods are best for you and the body style and the activity level that you do. Red meat, eggs, dairy products, they typically have those saturated fats, but you also can get some better fats 
from um, from sources like oils from vegetables um, so example coconut oil is a great oil to use when cooking um, it has a high capacity for heat and it really is great tasting oil so you can cook things in that olive oil of course too is a great oil um, also oils from fish is very beneficial now these have unsaturated fats and these tend to be a better food choice and I have on the screen for you just a, an example of what makes it a little bit better um, and all has to do with structure and there is this little thing in unsaturated fats there's a double bond over here nothing you have to memorize but I just wanted you to show that the difference in the actual structure is here so there is a small difference between a saturated and an unsaturated fat but the unsaturated fat is typically a better food choice Now we also see obesity, we see starvation, we see malnutrition in the world. Now do know that there's enough food all over the place, but it's very unequal where this food is located, where this food is produced. So if you get too much food, then it causes obesity. And this is where the body takes in more energy than is used, and it's typically stored as fat. Now obesity develops health issues like stroke, diabetes, heart disease, a long list of things that are very bad for the body. So obesity is something to obviously avoid. Now starvation and malnutrition, these are on the opposite spectrum. Starvation is where you have a severe or total lack of nutrients that are needed for the maintenance of life. So you don't want to starve yourself either. You want to find that happy medium. You take in as much energy as you need. Malnutrition is caused by not eating a balanced diet. So if you have malnutrition or you are malnourished, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are starving. It just means that you are not eating the proper proportions of stuff that you need, of food. Kwashiorkor is actually something, it's a form of malnutrition that's caused by the lack of protein in the diet. So I showed you these two pictures here. Um, we have one picture of malnutrition um, right here. And you can see very clearly that these people are, are, these children are not getting enough nutrients for life. These are typically, these are starving children. Whereas the picture on the right is a, is a a person or a small child that's malnourished and this is a form of kwashiorkor. Notice the extended belly here. This is all because of the lack of protein. So they may be getting plenty of carbohydrates, maybe fats, but really they have no protein in their diet. So they have this extended belly. It does not mean that they're obese. This is just a product of the lack of protein in their diet.